Now here we have a simultaneous equation and in this particular simultaneous equation you'll notice that it's got terms that are x squared and y squared. And whenever you have simultaneous equations where you've got an x squared or y squared term we need to use the method of substitution and I'll show you how that's done. In the usual way though start to number your equations so I've chosen 1 and 2 here and then what we do is we turn to the equation that hasn't got the squares in and we make either x or y the subject. Now in this particular example I'm going to choose to make x the subject but it would be just as easy to make y the subject. Okay so make sure you tell the reader what you're doing and so I'm saying that from 2 if I was to subtract y from both sides I would get that x would equal 3 minus y. And then label this equation number 3. And what we do now is that wherever we see an x in the other equation, that is in this example number 1, we replace the x with the 3 minus y. And so we must say to the reader that that's what we're doing. So I'm going to say sub, short for substitute, substitute x equals 3 minus y into number 1. So I'm just going to say sub 3 into number 1. And if I do that, what I get in place of x then is 3 minus y. And because the x was squared, I must put brackets around that and square it then I have plus y squared equals 5. Now what I have here now is an equation with one variable in it, the variable y. So I should be able to solve it. And to solve it I need to expand this bracket first. So in the usual way if we expand 3 minus y all squared we would get this. Okay, you should be able to do it really in your head, but what I'll do is I'll just write it out in full there, and then we've got the plus y squared equals 5. So if we do expand this, then we've got 3 times 3, which is 9, and then we've got minus 3y minus another 3y, so that's minus 6y, and then minus y times minus y is plus y squared. Then we have this plus y squared and equals 5. Tidying up, we have 2y squared, then we have minus 6y, and this is a quadratic equation because it's got a y squared term in. We often say that this is a quadratic in y. And like all quadratics, we should make sure that this equals 0. So that would mean subtracting 5 from both sides. So 9 subtract 5 is going to leave me with plus 4, and that's going to equal 0. And what I could do here is notice that each of the terms is divisible by 2, so I could divide by 2. And I would get y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. And then I need to factorise this quadratic, and it factorises a couple of brackets. We have a y and a y, and we also have minus 2 and minus 1 that would expand out to give y squared minus 3y plus 2. So therefore we would either have each of the factors equal to 0, so that would mean we would have y minus 2 equals 0 or the y minus 1 would equal 0. And I'll carry on down here. So if y minus 2 equals 0 that would mean that y would equal 2 or in the other case, when y minus 1 equals 0, adding 1 to both sides would just give y equals 1. So we have two values now of y, and we've got to find the appropriate value of x that corresponds with each of these y values. And to do that, all we need to do is substitute these y values into any one of these three equations. But the easiest equation to substitute it in is always the one that you made the subject, in this case number 3. 
So if I say substitute okay, y equals 2 into number 3, okay, we would have that x would equal 3 take away 2, which is clearly 1. And what I next need to do is substitute the other value for y, y equals 1, also into 3. And if I do that, x would equal 3 take away y, and y was 1 in this particular case, so 3 take away 1 is 2. What you need to do in the end is just summarize your results. And also put them as x first and then y. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so what we have here is x is 1 when y is 2. So x equals 1, y equals 2. Or quite separately, we have x is 2 and that corresponded with y equaling 1. And that would be the pair of solutions then to this simultaneous equation. And you could check, just in case you've made any mistakes that is, by just substituting these values into your equations. I'll just show you. Look, we've got x is 1, y is 2. 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 squared is 4, and you'll see that 1 add 4 makes 5. And also, 1 add 2 makes 3. And when we take the second pair, 2 and 1, 2 squared is 4, plus 1 squared is 1, 4 and 1 is 5, and 2 add 1 makes the 3. And you may remember, I also said to you, make sure you write them as x and then y. Why? Because we could write these as coordinates. 1, 2, or 2, 1. And the reason why I've written them as coordinates is because you could have a question which actually said to you, where do these two graphs intersect? And they would intersect at 1, 2, and 2, 1. And to show you that, I've drawn these. So we'll just remove this and I'll show you the graph. You'll see that the graphs of x plus y equals 3 and x squared plus y squared equals 5 are drawn here. And you'll notice that they intersect at these two points. So we're looking for a value of x and a value of y which is true for both equations. So it must be where they intersect. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that this point is the coordinate 1, 2. And this point here is the coordinate 2, 1. And these were the solutions, the x and y values, that we had for our simultaneous equations. So I hope you've been able to follow that. and. That brings us to the end of this tutorial.